When working with Revolve modifiers, we're often striving to achieve a level of accuracy that's much more difficult to achieve in a traditional keyframe-based animation system. However, if you look very closely, the rotation angles that you're generating isn't necessarily the most accurate. Let me show you a great example of this. I'm working in the train underscore wheels underscore start luxology project file, and I want to start wiring together all the, all the necessary Revolve modifiers to get the rotation of all of these wheels a little bit more mod, uh, a little bit more automated. And I think for this one, what I'm going to focus on is just this guy right here, just to make it a little bit easier. And let's just turn off the visibility of these two items. Get those out of the way, and we'll focus all of our attention on this one guy. And like in other videos, what we're going to do here is that we're going to use a locator within our scene to drive the movement of each one of these wheels, and, and we'll pair that, uh, that locator movement with a revolve modifier. So let's just go ahead and make that locator. There it is, chilling at the scene. We'll call this drain uh, uh, train mover. There we go. This is going to be the, the locator that's physically going to move the train itself. Let's move it out in front of the train and give it a fun little shape just so we can see its role and understand its role inside of our inside of our system. Let's just do, oh, I don't know, we'll do a fun little pyramid perhaps along the Y axis, and we'll make it a little bit smaller. We don't need to be gargantuan and uh, let's also give it let's also give it a fun little color here what color is it going to be we'll give it a light red there we go and we'll also change under its display values we'll make it a, a very much darker red for the wireframes there we go a little bit easier to see now. Okay. Now, what we're going to do here is that we're going to wire up the world position and world rotation values of this locator to drive the input values of our of our revolve modifier that will drive the rotation of all of these guys. So let's get that going here. Let's go into our channels. And what we're looking for under our train mover locator is world position and world rotation. Let's just drag those down in here. There we go. And now let's add our revolve modifier. It's under channel modifiers, other, and there it is. There's revolve. Okay. And let's just work with this guy here for the moment. And I think what we're going to want to influence, yep, is rotation X. There we go. So I'll go grab that wheel, find its rotation X. There it is right there. Drag that down into my schematic so I can begin working with it a little bit more directly. Okay, so on the surface, ultimately, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take the world position and rotation values of our locator, feed it into the rotation and position values of our, our revolve modifier, and then take the angle output here and feed it into rotation X. So as I move this guy along in our scene, you can see that, haha, wonderful. Now we're getting the type of movement that we're after. However, I'm not entirely confident that we're getting the accuracy that we need here. I want the rotation of this wheel to be perfect, to be exactly dialed. And one of the hidden channels inside of our revolve modifier is this radius. This radius channel will ensure that we're getting the correct radian of, uh, of rotation for our little wheel here. So let's just add it in. Now the radius uh, needs an input value here, so we're gonna have to do some fancy some fancy stuff here to be able to understand kind of a little bit more cleanly here and incredibly incredibly more accurate uh, to understand the radius of this of this wheel because ultimately that's what we're trying to figure out. We want to figure out the radius of this tire, excuse me, of this wheel, and use that radius value to influence its local rotation. So how are we going to do that? I certainly don't want to measure. I definitely don't want to guess. I would much rather have the fantastic thinking machine, the computer in front of me, do all the heavy lifting. lifting. So let's get a little bit sneaky here. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to add a locator, and uh, we're going to do we're going to do this. We're going to place that locator at the exact same location as that item's center point. So let's just do drop action here. We'll do uh, match position. We'll drag and drop it on top of that one. Boom, there it is. Now I know beyond any reasonable doubt that that new locator is sharing the exact same location and center point as its associated wheel. Now on this new locator, let's just call this wheel sizer. Wheel size, there we go. Uh, let's go into its properties value here and let's change the shape to, we're gonna, re, we're gonna replace it. And excuse me, the shape is gonna be a cylinder. Let's look at the options here where it's not gonna be a solid and we want it to be along the X axis. Now this is the cool thing about this because what we're gonna do here is that we're just gonna change the radius. Let's zip over to look at our scene from the right. And that radius value here 
Now we can kind of dial it in. I'm, I'm getting as close as I need it to be. And I'm just trying to figure out the radius. I don't care so much about the width because check it out. This is actually kind of cool. Let's go back into our item list. I want to grab wheel size, drag it down into my schematic. And then as one might imagine, if you go into your channels tab on your wheel size locator, now that we've added in that that uh, custom user, or excuse me, that custom draw, custom draw value, radius has been exposed. Check it out. So now we're exporting the radius that we defined in the locator, the custom locator size, and we're going to use that as an input value to the radius. Boom for our revolve modifier. Now I know beyond any reasonable doubt that the size of my wheel has been defined by this guy. It's being used inside of my revolve modifier, which is eventually using that to drive the rotation of the wheel itself. I now have created an incredibly accurate system where I know I'm getting the correct degree of uh, rotation based on the movement of this master locator.